Once upon a time, two retired teachers decided to convert their garage into a pottery studio. Along with their daughter and son, they built a business around the idea that the world could use a little more art and a lot more artists. We're the Kaya family. Welcome to Walkie Pots. Hi everybody, how you doing? How you been? How are things? Shane and Diana here for another edition of our Coffee Time here at yep. Walkie Pot Studio. Is this number 27? It is. Yay. 27. Coffee Time number 27. What are we going to talk about <laughs> in this week's episode? <laughs> well, we had so much going on that we'll get started with last week mm-hmm. and talk about those things. We glazed our pieces right. for Cleopalooza, so mm-hmm. we actually have those sitting out on the table Woo-hoo. now. Yay. You want to talk about yours and then sure. I can talk about mine? Yep, so sure. So um, this piece here, this big, uh, I'm going to call it a picture uh, that I did. This is for Cleopalooza, and it's a three-piece uh kind of a sculpture but it is functional it's hollow inside i could totally fill that with iced tea if i really wanted to <laughs> um and pour it out i but, wouldn't want to have to pour it from uh, that because oh my gosh can pretty, you imagine you'd have to be like arnold schwarzenegger to, yeah. to use that so <laughs> so um it's, it was made in in three parts i threw the bottom in one piece and then i threw another uh vessel kind of shape and inverted it on top to get this round dome and then I hand built the tree trunk uh, around it coming up. Um, and this was done with uh, coils. So I basically made snakes of clay and created this uh, tree trunk and then more snakes of clay to make the vines. And I think th- that uh, when I was telling Diana what glazes I-, I wanted on this, I think she did a great job um, living up to my expectations for what this would, would look like. Thank uh, you. We used, <laughs> we used uh, a nice green for the vines, and there's no brown glaze in the, the uh, tree at all. This is, this is the natural color of the Sheltoe Brown with some black underglaze rubbed into the texture of the bark that I carved into it. Um, and then we've got uh, that really nice blue with some flux um, on the, the vase itself. So that turned out very good. Um, I'm pleased with it. It's going to be on a pedestal at the um, uh, gallery in Ocean City. And uh, I'm looking, looking forward to a, yeah. a successful showing with it. I think it's, it's, it's going to be great. So that was one nice. of the things I did um, mm-hmm. last week. One of the things that came out of the kiln right. last week. Right. Uh, we have lots of other things too. But while we're on the subject of Cleopalooza, why don't you tell us about the things that you did that are going to be on yes. display? You know, being the, the functional potter that I am, I always I like very useful things. Mm-hmm. And, and so I did a mug a bowl and a plate and and I did show these in our kiln opening yesterday Mm -hmm. but I've got to decide which bowl I'm going to go with right now I'm really leaning towards the bowl that has the starfish on the inside and like the sandy beachy bottom from a sculptural standpoint I like that one a little better I think it actually it looks really nice sitting on the plate and of course where mine's going to be on a pedestal too I thought the bowl would sit on the plate and then the mug would be like behind the plate because then I've got three different mm-hmm. levels. So I thought that would look good. Yeah, I think it'd um, be great. When Sarah asked, I said, just a medium height one should be fine because she said, did I want low or medium or tall? And I thought, well, medium, they'd actually be able to see the inside. Right. So we'll see. Yep. But anyway, it'll be a new experience because we've never done this before. Right, yeah, we get to so. we get to rub elbows with, with uh, very artsy people. It's going to oh, be fun. yeah. Maybe yep. I'll, oh, I can wear my art pants. You can't see my art pants right now, but I have them on so that I can be quite visible this afternoon when I go to the PBR so that my daughter and her boyfriend, James, can spot me. They're Incredible. very, yeah. very colorful. We'll talk more about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah. But some of the stuff, uh, some of the other things that we did last week, Diana, you made some plates. and I did. I love those. Those are so so pretty. Yes. Um, um, and I actually, one of the plates, is, well, I made a, a couple of them, but this particular plate is made with porcelain. You mean stupid porcelain. I'm just kidding. I, I, it's his nemesis We're going to talk about that porcelain in yes, a moment. Yes, yes. But I did make this with a porcelain, and I used a strawberry underglaze decal. I'll get that out. Um, 
and I just I thought this would be so cute and I did another one of these in a different white glaze a white clay this one is the Kentucky Mudworks Ace Man. We're hoping this is going to be a replacement for the white clay we used to use here yeah. in the studio. Because this need is a, a stoneware, whereas the other is a porcelain. And I'll, I'll hold them up. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but boy, I can see a There's difference a... in the whiteness. Right. Porcelain is super white. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll look stunning with the. And we'll see when oh, it's yeah, fired the also the difference. Um, and this one has a blue rose. Is I don't, it? I don't, it looks like a I rose. Think it's a rose. It's a blue rose, fine. Underglazed decal. I don't use a lot of decals, but mm -hmm. we'll try it and see transfer. That. It's not a decal. It's a transfer because it's right. underglazed. Right. I'll get it out. It'll be. I think it's. I'm still tired fantastic. from the marking yesterday. <laughs> That's okay. It <laughs> but, was. It was a tear. And day. I did. I did also make a few pendants um, with the Ice Man to try out the Ice Man mm -hmm. um, to see how that works. I, I will put pictures up for you guys so you can yeah. see a little closer what we're talking yeah. about. Because my current necklace that I'm wearing is on the standard 112. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to try a well, different clay. Well, fantastic. Yes. Uh, let me talk about some of the uh, raku that we talked yes. about. And that'll kind of lead us into yeah, um, our question. Well, no, I guess I, I want to address... You better talk about, about your to, trials and tribulations. I want to address the white porcelain elephant in the room, <laughs> right? All right, so, so here's the thing. Uh, I had 25 pounds of porcelain from... Uh, several months ago that I had purchased and I was mm -hmm. so excited to get a chance to play with that on the wheel uh, and it's it's a beautiful clay once it's fired one of the great things about porcelain is that when you build something with it and it's thin enough it's translucent so light will pass through it so I was very anxious to to make some things with porcelain and I do have here a little porcelain bottle um, that that I made Mm -hmm. uh, this is a singular success from several failed uh, yeah, it's attempts. It's the only at other survivor. Things. This is this is the sole survivor, <laughs> and I say sole survivor uh, tentatively because it might not make it. It still might not make it. We're, it it's just been thrown, and it's in the greenware stage right now, and it has a lot of drying to do, and that's kind of the crux of the problem. So I I made some cups out of porcelain, and it's a very smooth. Uh, very buttery consistency it, in feel. It's very similar to the brown clay that we normally use, our Chateau Brown from Kentucky Mudworks. But, but this porcelain that I'm using is not as compliant, and it's not as pliable, and it's not as bendy. It's not as flexible or as easy to coke into shape. Mm -hmm. So when, for example, I was making this uh, this bottle, getting that curve required literally twice as much effort as getting that exact same curve with our shell till we brown our brown clay wants to bend it's very flexible and very bendy um, this clay requires much more effort uh, to get it to make those organic round shapes much more pressure pushing in much more pressure pushing out um, and that's not really a problem though. That isn't uh, an issue. You just have to adjust to it requiring more actual mm -hmm. force to work with the same amount of clay. Right. But the issue is um, I like to make things on a wooden bat on my wheel and then lift the bat off the wheel, put it on the shelf and uh, let it dry for a day or two and then put it back on my wheel still on the bat for the trimming. And the porcelain we have does not like to do that. Um, and uh, I had a couple of pretty dramatic uh, snatching failure from the jaws of success. Um, and that's really what it was. Uh, I thought I had a couple of really nice cups with very, very thin cups with very nice thin handles already attached. And then uh, I went and, uh, you know, to look at them for the final trimming. And they had cracked in the bottom where they were still in contact with the wooden bat. And I didn't take pictures of it, mostly because I was too busy throwing things in the studio here. Um, so I was, I was, but you know what? It's yes. one of those times you invent yes. new curse words that you didn't yes. even know yes. were possible. And you possible. took great satisfaction in throwing that clay in the plastic bag. and it, the, Right, the bag of shame. <laughs> The bag of shame is where the porcelain bits from my cup are now um, hydrated with water. I'll get back to them in a couple of days, mm. a couple of weeks or whatever. And I will try again. I will keep trying right. with the porcelain until I 
uh, succeed at working with it. I will say that my failing with those uh, cups was more lack of experience than anything else. And I really believe there's nothing wrong with the clay. Right. It's just that I need to change the way that I make things. I need to change my my uh, procedure and process for working with porcelain. It is very different in how it behaves. Uh, so I just need to. It's a learning a curve, bit. is all. It is, and, and that's kind of what makes it fun. Yeah, it'll, it'll be so fun. So you'll get there. I know you will. You you've done it with all the other clays that we've tried. That's so, right. And, Every... and it's a reminder that you don't sit down the first time to anything and do it really well. Right. It takes time and practice and keep going. And every clay has its own personality. And some of the personalities are very similar. Um, the speckle clay we work with has a personality that's very similar to the raccoon mm -hmm. clay we work mm -hmm. with. But even then, it's it's different. They have The clay has its own, uh, I guess you'd call it a, a spirit, right? The clay right. has its own soul. And you really have to get used to the clay you're working with in order uh, to make it... Um, a successful experience right so the porcelain is a still remains a work in progress i will get it and sometime in the future you're going to see some beautiful porcelain stuff mm -hmm. coming from walkie pot studio but it's not anytime in the near future yes. it's going to be a while it's going to be a while and so last week we also did some raku firings yeah. we did two raku firings same day mm -hmm. um and some of the pieces were for us and some of the pieces were for the um, Osprey Nest Art Gallery. And that actually brings us to a question that mm -hmm. we've been asked. And, and that is, what is the difference between the Misty Line Pony Hair Pottery and the Raku Pottery that we have on our table at the market? Right. And we need to talk about that because this is an important distinction. Mm -hmm. um, our normal Raku pottery that we make is made with our daughter's uh, horse's hair um, and she's got a horse named Magic and we, we love that horse very much mm -hmm. but that horse is n not famous in, in any way. The only thing she's famous for is she only likes one kind of apple and she's a bit of a princess. With she has to have it cut up. Yeah, it has to be has to be cut up. But she's not going to eat it; just but, crunch. But she's not famous on on her own. But we need to talk about the difference between our normal raku and the Misty Line Pony Hair pottery that you can only get at uh, the Osprey Nest Gallery in uh, Chincoteague, Virginia. Now, I have here some of our normal pieces, and I have here some pieces that are just for the Osprey Nest. Now, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, let me ex explain there's a difference. Uh, in one, one thing that you'll notice is the bottom of the pottery, if it's Misty Line Pony Hair Pottery, will have the MPP on it, Misty Line Pony Hair Pottery. Um, and that uh, designates that it was made with the, the hair from the descendants of the very famous horse by the name of Misty from Shinkteek. Mm -hmm. Misty was a Shinkteek pony. Um, and there was a very famous uh, book written about her. And Misty's descendants are still uh, residents of um, some local farms, and mm -hmm. you know even you know other places across the country too, because people will buy the descendants of Misty or other Shinkti ponies and move uh, move them um, to wherever their farm is uh, all over the country. Uh, so the the biggest distinction distinction is the bottom of the pottery, what it looks like. Now, having said that, the process for making the pottery isn't different at all. But what happens when we make the Misty Line Pony Hair Pottery is the hair that we touch on the outside of it is only and exclusively from the descendants of, right. of Misty of Shinkteek um, and the other, uh, you know, those other kind of famous uh, ponies from, from Shinkteek. Our regular horsehair raku uh, is, is not uh, a famous uh, horse right. hair. Um, it could be Carolyn's horse or some of her friends' horses now. Right, right. <laughs> well, you know, and they send some clippings and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, um, we now have had four different people talk to us about the Raku pottery on the table. And we explain the process and how it's done and all. And then they kind of look at us and they're like, oh, my goodness. I, would you be willing to put my horse's hair on it? 
And we're like, certainly, yes. Right. So we're so, we are definitely envisioning a time yeah. when we will be doing custom uh, uh, yeah. vases and stuff for people, so that they can memorialize their their own horses, either horns, horses they currently have, or possibly um, horses that they used to have where they kept a braid of their, their hair right. or whatever. And I, I'm going to make up a flyer that explains the process and all that and that we can do that mm-hmm. so that people um, people can have that option because and, it's a great way to have something that it's a keepsake to always have uh, memories of right. your And we haven't horse. started doing those custom vases just yet, but yes. just, so, just so everybody's clear and you understand... There's only one place on planet Earth that you can get misty line uh, right. pony hair pottery, and that is at the Osprey Nest um, on Shinkteak Island, Virginia. Yeah. Uh, our regular Raku pieces, we love them and we're very proud of them, but they are not as uh, rare as, <laughs> as, as the misty line pony hair pottery. Now, having said that, uh, I am extremely proud of some of the, probably inordinately proud of some of the Raku that we did uh, produce last week. I love these little vases. Mm-hmm. Um, we had originally intended to make three pieces of the uh, Misty um, <laughs> Raku, but one of them failed. So you'll, you'll only be able to see these two at, uh, at the Osprey Nest because this piece here, although it was made with the hair of the and descendants of Misty. And it looks pretty sitting there. It looks pretty, mm-hmm. but it has three cracks that go all the way through the vase, and it's not structurally no. sound enough to sell. These are structurally sound, but it's important to note that with the horsehair raku, you will sometimes see hairline cracks. And our own personal rule is, if you can see the crack on the outside, but not on the inside, then it, to us, that's acceptable. These are decorative only, not meant to hold food or liquid of any kind. Mm-hmm. So for us, that's acceptable. But what's not acceptable is what happened on this piece. And that's right. where we have three cracks, not just one, but three cracks that extend through the uh, inside and the outside of the piece. And we can't, in good conscience, sell that. So this is destined just to be a showpiece here in the studio, a demonstration or a something for us to look at in here we wouldn't ever sell that to somebody to put on their own shelf at home because it could literally one day just right. <laughs> fall apart i mean right now it looks wonderful but it's we just, not sturdy it's it's not structurally it's not. sound these no. however will be uh perfectly fine and the other pieces that we have here uh are also uh structure structurally sound they're, they're going to be great yes all right. So let's move on. That was. Yes. Hope, I hope that was a good enough description. Don't <laughs> don't hesitate to to uh, contact us if you have any more yeah. questions about the the horsehair raku or our process or anything like that. Uh, if there's one thing that will get us to talk without shutting up, it's our horsehair raku. Like we will literally always talk about that. You especially. Me especially. <laughs> Me especially. I think I heard how it was done. Last Twenty thousand times. Yesterday. Yes. Twenty thousand. Yes. But that's years. okay. That's... But people are always interested in that yeah. too, so it's good. It's yeah, fun. It's fun. Um, but another thing. So we were talking about that because we do have lots of questions that come up at the market. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're going to go ahead and share our most popular item of the week, which is kind of strange, honestly. Yes. Plates. Yeah, everybody was buying plates. Plates yesterday. Isn't that cool? Every week it's something different. So it's mm-hmm. kind of cool to see what's going to be the popular item of the week. We so, yeah. We haven't yet found a thing that is universally popular mm-hmm. every single time we set up. Yeah, yeah. Um, mugs are starting to edge out. The heart dishes are starting to edge out. Plates and bowls. You know, your typical functional wear pieces are starting mm-hmm. to creep out. Mm-hmm. But not... So much so that you can definitively say, yes, that's it. <laughs> right. It, and and we wouldn't have as much success if we set up yeah. selling only plates, for example, or yeah. only cups. And the other thing about the market, guys, we discovered yesterday, it gets hot. Yep. It gets quite <laughs> it gets steamy over there. super hot. We came home. We took showers. We laid down, took a nap. It was... And we were beat. Yeah, um, it was... It was. So this sorry. afternoon, in fact, you are heading to Salisbury to... I get to buy gadgets, you guys. I'm going to go yeah. find one of those battery-operated <laughs> misting fans. Um, we're going to stay cool. We're going to stay cool. <laughs> and we're also going to make sure we have a cooler with, with ice. And one thing I forgot to mention, and I didn't do a very good job showing it, no. uh, but I gotta, I'm got i going to move this Here, just so we can... Piece? Yep. 
just so we can show. I'll set it over here. This little planter that we have here, this box was made by uh, James Hansen from Hansen's Craftery, and mm -hmm. I just he showed it to to me yesterday, and I really fell in love with it. It's made out of cedar, mm -hmm. and it will eventually go outside. But I wanted to give a little shout out uh, yeah. to James and his really awesome craftsmanship. If you guys want larger items, yeah. uh, he makes planters that are huge, up to as like as big as this table. Um, do check out Hanson's Craftery and James and his whole family make some really fantastic yeah. things. So, so anyway, that's that's um, the deal with this. Yes. Um, Plus, he brought us waters from his cooler yesterday, and they were ice cold. So we're <laughs> going to be bringing a cooler with ice next time we set yes. up for sure. Yes. So, yep. alrighty. Well, let's move on because it's time for my favorite thing, and that's our map update. Map update. Map update. I will show a picture, you guys, yes. too. Yes. So our new folks that are letting us know where they're from are both from Ohio. Nice. Yes. So Julia from Little Hawking and Dory from Mansfield. Nice. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, and we also now know that our viewer in Japan is Kyo. Yeah, that, that was really great. They saw that we yes. were struggling with the, the name and they told us that their name was yes. Kyo, K-I-Y-O, which yes. is interesting because our last name is K-I-O. Yes. So we're very similar. And you know, and I, I, I looked it up and it means, it's a, a girl name in Japanese and it means clear, pure, clean. Nice. Beautiful name. Beautiful name. Well, anyway, that was very nice. Thank you, Kyo, for yes. helping us with your name. We appreciate that. And of course, I have to, I have to let Ellen from the Netherlands, I have to let you know. We did get to make our stamp pot, finally. We'll show you a picture of it, yes. but let me tell you, that picture had to be snapped pretty quickly because we ate that, like, so fast. There it were no delicious. leftovers. It was None. Delicious. It was delicious. It really was. So, And this coming week, we are going to be starting to study as a family a little bit about Saskatchewan, you mm -hmm. know, for Connie, who's watching. And one of the things that I found that I want us to make is service berry Pie. Right, we it's just got called that. Saskatoon service berry pie. We just got for our anniversary. We just got a service berry tree, and we, we planted it in, in in the yard. Um, it's pretty small, and it does it hasn't produced anything. You know, it so did far, have some berries, but the birds happily took them very have, quickly. We have more birds than berries. Yes, um, but I'm hoping. I don't know if there's anyone in our area that actually has service berries that we could get them from. We'll, we'll um, but out. I did put it out there asking if anybody knew of anywhere that I could get some. The other thing I did notice is we could actually order it online and get them frozen and sent to us. It's a little costly, but that's okay. It'd be worth it. It'll be worth it to try something. And um, so hopefully Connie will be making that. Don't know if it'll be this week because it depends on if I can find them. But very soon very we're going to be making them. And... Um, and we'll yep. let you guys know how that turns out. <laughs> yeah, yep, I can't wait. Now, is there anybody, any other new viewers that we st are sticking a pin in the map for that we know of? Not, not at this time. So if you're watching and you haven't yet told us where you're watching from, guys, let us know. I'll get your pin put on the map for you. And who knows, your area might be the next area we start learning about. And, and also, if you know for yeah. sure you told us where you're from, and you also know for sure that we haven't uh, pointed it out yet, That's it's true. because we missed the comments. Um, we we are having a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not a difficult time, I won't say that. But I will say that sometimes the comments get buried, and sometimes it, they just don't pop up where we can see them. So right. if you have already told us, and we didn't note um, then please tell us again because yeah. we don't want to miss anyone. No, no. Every one of you counts. Right. So, yeah. So, um, but so excited um, to put some more pins in. Yep. So. All right. So what else do we have? Kicking? All righty. Well, this coming week, whoop, whoop. and we've got some different things going on this week because Tuesday we have the Sugar Bowl class. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing uh, hand-built sugar bowls. So we should have pictures of those for you guys next week. Um, and then the other thing that we have going on is, oh, my necklace is backwards. Sorry. <laughs> Talk about train of thought just going right on. So the, the other road. thing we have going oh, on. Oh, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> okay. Um, is that um, we have to go set the pieces up 
in Ocean City tomorrow afternoon. I think we have to meet them at two o'clock um, to put them in. And then Friday night is the opening night. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be there between five and seven. Oh man, I'm gonna have from to from five to seven. I'm gonna yes. have to shave, and I might have to wear a tie. Oh no, yes. <laughs> it's been a long time. It's been a long time. I remember how to tie a tie. <laughs> yes, I yes. wear a bolo tie. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. So um, we also need to do another glaze load this mm -hmm. week. So I'm I'm struggling to actually be able to make things. For glazing and the problem is if I don't start making things I'm gonna run out of things to glaze I'm gonna make 50 cups this week maybe not 50 but I'm gonna make a lot of cups I'm, oh, I'm very anxious nice. very anxious to get back to my shelter we uh, brown oh, clay. well that's true um, it's, it, it'll be like yeah. uh, talking to an old friend again yes and and for some reason we've been having problems with handles recently we've never had problems with handles so we're thinking it's something going on in the studio with the Humidity. season change and and stuff yeah we so. have to slow down our drying process just a little yeah bit, things are drying way too fast so yep. yeah so we'll do that and then um well that's about it for studio stuff, but we got yes. other stuff to do. Out, we do, well, out, outside we the actually, studio. we did not get to Pennsylvania to get the order, and I have everything in the cart online, but we have to decide how much clay we need to get. I'm going to say we're going to need a little more Raku and a lot yeah. more of the shelter we brown. So once we decide that, then I can go ahead and push the button, and then they'll call us when it's ready. So it could be this week, it could be next week. So it'll be one of one of the next two weeks that we go um and then the other thing is we have got to do some major cleaning because yeah we have this a, studio is a wreck it's right a mess now. you guys it this really is about is. the neatest spot we have <laughs> i'll bet if we swept the floor right now and put it in in some water i'll bet we'd have two pounds of clay just oh, from the that's dust that's not a good thought no and that's you know, probably not accurate but yes close. but we we've got to have a better cleaning routine out here in the studio we need to have a cleaning routine <laughs> any cleaning routine would be better than just <laughs> looking at the ceiling when we walk guys so i anyway, know we, we need it's, to it's hard better. because we come into the studio and we just want to get started laser focus you know and then we're exhausted and we're like oh it's time to go in and eat dinner Right, and so we're going to have yeah. to do better. We've got to build in some time for that. But not just the studio. We need to, you know, we need to dedicate time to both the studio and the house because I don't know about you, but I've been waking up in the middle of the night just thinking pottery. Yeah, it's pretty much all consuming at this point. <laughs> so, anyway, I got to find some balance again. Remember my my cups is balance balance and yep. and i have lost my balance again so, yeah, so we're i've gonna, got to rebalance <laughs> yeah we're gonna have to we're gonna have to fix that somehow but we yeah. can it'll be fine so but that is probably it for this coming week um and oh i i know it's out of order but do you guys see my fish plate isn't that great, you guys? <laughs> yes, it's fantastic. I, yes, I glazed that and it went in this past week. So he's on the table because I'm enjoying him. Yep, the the fish plate <laughs> turned out fantastic. It's done on shell toey brown, and yeah. uh, Diana used some stroke and coat uh, vanilla dip uh, speckles with speckles for the lighter yeah, parts, the which I don't parts. usually use. So. Uh, Albany slip but brown anyway. and and uh, on the brown parts, and then the uh, indigo float. For the blue? No, what no, it? it was blue surf. Blue surf. It was blue, blue surf. Part. And then I also have textured turquoise, and I also have Albany slip brown. So mm -hmm. I've got all the f current favorites. So we're there. looking forward to that. And that wasn't terribly time consuming to yeah. make, so we may we may have some more of those uh, also. Yes. So that that's going to be like you you're are you taking that to the market? Yes, that one's going to the market. So that'll be on the market table next week. That's going to so go on. It's one of the few things that I actually have done that's going to get to go to the market. Yeah, somebody's going to buy that fast. Um, so anyway, but it's been a wonderful week and it's going to be a wonderful day. I'm heading over to Ocean City. To Yeehaw. <laughs> so Diane is going to go watch the rodeo. Yes. Um, or as as uh, it's the PBR, it's the professional bull riders. The, the rodeo, <laughs> is, as some old relatives used to call it. Yeah. Um, so Diane is gonna get her cowboy, uh, get her cowgirl on, right? Yes. And she's gonna go uh, with James and Carolyn and watch yeah. uh, some grown men try to cling to the back of a of, of a bucking bull for I've eight always, seconds. 
I root for the Bulls. <laughs> she does. She her favorite athletes in the <laughs> pro bull riding circuit are are the Bulls. Well, you know, it's a lot of work on their part. It really is. <laughs> yep. But I do have my favorite bull riders too. But, right. but you know, they're kind of retired now. So. Yeah, well, I was going to say, that was so back these, in the these, 90s. Yeah, these new ones I, I'm not so familiar with. But, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll find a, a new favorite today. And you and Christopher are going to go get that fan. Right, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna make a trip to uh, the hardware store. We're going to pick up that misting fan and some thicker hardy backer boards so that we can yeah. uh, do a better job with this reclaim that is yeah. getting out of hand. Yeah. Yep. Alrighty, so that is going to wrap us up for the day. All right. Okay, well, shall I go ahead and sign it out? Sure thing. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We appreciate every one of you. And uh, uh, please do hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell icon also if you want to be notified of new content. But if we're finished, let's go ahead and yes. sign it. All right. Toodaloo, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Take care. See you later. Have a fantastic day no matter where you're at. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.